The Framework Laptop Chromebook Edition, we'll just go with Framework or Framework Chromebook for the rest of this review, is a device that is largely without peer. In the Chromebook space specifically, there's absolutely nothing like it at $999, and it's a very interesting Chromebook that gets much of the high-end equation right, even if some of the things that make it so unique might be a little bit of a turnoff for those looking for the best, most premium Chromebook that you can buy. So let's talk about it. From the get-go, there are really two things you need to know about the Framework Chromebook. It's got a lot of the mojo of a premium laptop, and it does all of that with an unflinching commitment to being modular, upgradable, and repairable. All by itself, that's quite the feat if you think about it, and without saying much more about this Chromebook, I think it's easy to say that if you value both of those things, premium feel and modularity, you're gonna have a pretty enjoyable ownership experience if you do choose to buy one of these. We'll get into a few of the little quirks and flaws that this Chromebook does have, but overall, it pulls off the premium Chromebook experience quite convincingly. Most times, I totally forgot the fact that I was using a laptop that could come apart with ease and simply got lost in all the standard stuff this Chromebook does so well. From the display, to the keyboard, to the trackpad, to the speed on the inside, the Framework Chromebook makes for a great user experience across the board. So let's get to the good stuff first. And there's a lot of it, thankfully. And it starts with the build quality. Even though this laptop is built to be taken apart, it really doesn't give that away all the time. The all aluminum chassis is firm and confidence inspiring. It gives off like this older MacBook vibe with its kind of powdery silver coated finish. And it resists fingerprints really well. And the simple aesthetic and the framework logo right there on the lid just looks fantastic. The only place this all kind of shows its modularity is in the bottom where you have a kind of a big fan port and four expansion ports. We'll, we'll get into those here in a second. Overall, things are reasonably light and thin coming in at 2.9 pounds and 16 millimeters thick. It's not the thinnest or lightest Chromebook ever made, but not once did the size feel too large or too heavy for use out and about on the desk or on the couch. And the size of the chassis allows for the screen that is one of the better panels you'll see on a Chromebook. It's a 3x2, 13.5 inch QHD panel that looks amazing and has a peak brightness of over 400 nits. It only misses one big feature, and that's touch input. So those looking for that sort of thing are gonna have to look elsewhere. But on the whole, however, the size, the resolution, the aspect ratio of this screen is just one of my favorites in a Chromebook, and it makes using the framework incredibly pleasing. And that whole vibe just continues down to the keyboard and trackpad where the backlit keys have great travel and a great click and they just make typing for hours on end a complete joy. It's one of my favorite keyboards in a Chromebook for sure and pair that with a smooth clicky glass trackpad and you have an input combo that rivals literally any laptop out there. Not once did I have any issues with either of them and using this Chromebook as my daily writing device for a few weeks now has only solidified the excellence framework achieved with these two input methods. Even the speakers are better than most giving off a really solid full sound that's honestly a little surprising with their bottom firing speaker placement. They're not the best speakers I've ever heard on a Chromebook, but they're definitely up there and they make content consumption really enjoyable. Finally, to round out the good standard Chromebook stuff, I'd point to the four swappable expansion cards that you can use to change out your four connections to your liking. For me, I've gone with a single USB type A, two of the USB type C ports, and one full size HDMI port. The other options you can swap in include a display port, ethernet, micro SD card, or expanded memory inserts. And these can be swapped as needed too. So your configuration can change on the fly whenever you need it to. Again, not something we've ever seen in a Chromebook prior to this one, and it's a really interesting feature. And that's where the modular build of this Chromebook really starts to come into play. Not only can you swap out the ports as needed, it's dead simple to take the entire thing apart, upgrade, and repair every single piece of this Chromebook. We did a quick video about how easy it was to slap in some extra RAM with the guided videos available. And with those videos, taking everything apart on the inside, swapping out something like the display, or changing the storage, the fans, the speakers, or even the camera on this device would be something general users could tackle with relative ease. Well, 
compared with a standard laptop anyway. And all of this upside comes with some pretty sweet internals too, giving you a 12th gen Core i5-1240p processor, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of NVMe storage, integrated Iris XE graphics, Wi-Fi 6E, and Bluetooth 5.2. That Core i5 variant is the same processor we see in the gaming-focused Acer Chromebook 516 GE, and it's a bit more powerful than the more standard U-series i5. So with these specs, I'm sure I don't have to tell you this, but this thing is really fast. There's really nothing holding you back, and whether it's a heavy workload, video edits, and something like LumaFusion, or some gaming down the road when Steam games finally arrive, this setup has you covered. And in only a couple minutes, you could install up to 64 gigs of RAM if you wanted to, making this a little bit of a beast with the right upgrades. All that power comes with decent battery life too, as long as you keep the screen brightness under control. With things around 50 to 60%, you can expect you know, around eight hours of use and push it closer to 10 hours of use with a bit lower brightness. It's not a battery champ, but it's gonna get you comfortably through an entire workday without any real issues. And though all those things sound amazing, they are, there are some clear misses with this Chromebook too. And at $999, we have to be picky. Modularity comes at a bit of a price on some parts of this experience and the ups and downs of what framework is put together here have to be taken in stride if this one's gonna be the one for you. For instance, sometimes when I unplug the HDMI cable to leave my desk, the entire expansion card just comes right out. It obviously shouldn't do that, but it happens pretty often. Uh, to me, that's just part of having a modular Chromebook. But to some of you, little things like that happening on a $1,000 Chromebook, it's gonna really irk you. And then there's the missing fingerprint scanner. Framework makes one that replaces the power button for the Windows version, but for some reason, it's not available and doesn't work on the Chromebook version. It's an upgrade I'd expect to be included for this price, but for some reason they chose just not to put it in this model. It's just kind of a head scratcher. And then there's the camera. It's 1080p, it has a toggle for both microphone and camera up top, but the quality is a letdown. It's grainy and it just looks odd. The dynamic range leaves a lot to be desired. It just doesn't look great. It works, sure, but the camera on a $999 Chromebook should be better than this. Maybe a better version arrives down the road that'll be an optional upgrade from Framework, that's the benefit of owning one of these framework laptops for sure. And I guess that's just what it comes down to really. A thousand bucks for a Chromebook is expensive, but with the framework, you're getting a whole lot for that investment. With top-notch speed, you're also getting a great build quality, a stellar display, an a keyboard and trackpad, a swappable input selection, solid battery life, but for all that modularity and ease of repair, you're you're also kind of losing a few things along the way. It's lacking a fingerprint scanner. It's a non-touch display. It's a mediocre camera. And those finicky expansion ports may just turn some of you off. In the end, you just have to decide what's right for you. If you value the ability to repair and upgrade with ease, then the few deficits this Chromebook ships with probably aren't that big of a deal to you. But if you're spending $9.99 with the expectation that you're getting the best, most polished Chromebook experience ever made, the small issues that I've run into might be enough to make you want to wait for something else to come along. It really comes down to the individual on this one. But regardless of where you stand on the importance of modularity, the Framework Laptop Chromebook Edition is a stellar device on the whole. I mean, I've loved my time with it for sure, and I think many of you out there that are ready to go a bit more premium with your Chrome OS experience could enjoy this thing a whole lot, and it could be a really solid fit for you. And with OS updates scheduled until June of 2030, and the ability to easily upgrade and repair it, the Framework Chromebook could hang around for the long haul. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to ring the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.